Right, so the, the question I've been, I've been given tonight is, how can you take the Bible literally? Which, uh, by the way, just in the way the question is phrased, it sounds antagonistic, doesn't it? Like, how can you take the Bible literally? And I always feel like you could probably go through the question and underline different words and probably emphasize different things, right? Like, how can you take the Bible literally? 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 You know what I mean? Like, um, the, um, and, and so, well, let me, I'll come back to that. Let me throw a few questions back at you. Did Moses part the Red Sea or God flood the earth in the time of Noah? Did Jesus rise from the dead or David flood his couch with tears? Did Adam eat fruit from a forbidden tree or was Jonah swallowed by a whale? Are the words of Jesus accurate? Is the Bible just a myth? And so one thing I want to highlight right at the beginning here is that it's important when you're talking with someone in conversation to figure out what's significant to them about the question. And so if you're answering the wrong question, the question that's underneath the question, as it were, if you're answering the wrong question, what you're saying might be useless and might not really be addressing where they're at. And so sometimes you need to kind of dig a bit deeper. So if someone were to say, how can you take the Bible literally? Well, there's different questions that might be there. And so I've put in your notes kind of three possibilities that I'll take you into right now. And so one possibility might be, this might be the question underneath the question. Do you really believe the Bible is a book from God? Right? You know, we as Christians believe that the Bible's God's word, unlike other books, it claims to be God-breathed. And you could do things like try to explain the historicity of the Bible and the, how accurately it's been translated. You could talk about the Dead Sea Scrolls and how amazing, you know, nearly 2,000 years later, how accurate um, the trans- transmission has been over that time. You know, there's different things you could do. But what I would say is for most people, to the question, do you really believe the Bible is a book from God, is really a journey of, first of all, discovering a relationship with God, and then using the Bible as a way of exploring that relationship further. And so what I would probably do with someone asking if that was their question, for me it would be a chance to share with them my testimony in coming to know Jesus and how I discovered the significance of the Bible, and which is almost then an invitation for them to do the same. Okay? Because, uh, in a way, that piece of how are you going to believe that the Bible is the Word of God probably isn't going to, you're not, probably not going to logically argue someone into that. That's something that's going to come more from experience. Okay, so that's what I want to say, first of all, first question there. Second question that might be underneath the question. Do you take as fact the unusual stories in the Bible? So the uh, the Bible is to be taken literally when it intends to be literal. Key to this is understanding the different types of writing and how they should be read that we find in the Bible, different Bible genre. Um, But the Bible is an ancient book, and we must first understand it like we are the original hearers or we're likely to misread it. And so when David says, I flood my couch with my tears, we know, oh, well, that's poetry. He doesn't literally mean that floods are coming from his eyes. He's being poetic. And if, and this is, by the way, I think a a helpful thing. If someone's block to coming to faith is a particular part of the Bible, I think it helps that you can say that other Christians believe differently than you do. Okay? Okay. I mean, I know there's some wacky Christians out there, but, you know, it helps that you can say that, that other Christians think differently than you do. The person, for example, might have trouble believing that Jonah was swallowed by a whale. By, some, by saying that some, um, some Christians would believe that this was written as a metaphor makes it possible for that person to come to faith and change their mind later. And I think that's really helpful. And in that, there's something about recognizing what's really important in coming to faith and what doesn't really matter that much. The Holy Spirit can work on it later, okay? And so again, um, I think it's good to make it reasonable for someone that sure, that I, I believe that Jonah was really swallowed by a whale. And yet at the same time, some people would think that's a metaphor and I can understand why they think that, okay? 
But then a third question, which is underneath the question, can God do the miraculous? And I would say that God is able to do the miraculous and can act with unusual power when it is needed to accomplish his overall plan. However, God normally acts with, in line with the natural order of things that he has established. So God might part the Red Sea to rescue the nation of Israel to be his people as part of his big plan, whereas he may not part the Red Sea just because someone asks it to happen today. Right? And so, how can you take the Bible literally? Where is the per person's question coming from? Can you discover that in conversation and in talking with them and listening? And then can you address the question, the, really the question that they have?